Thank you for joining us today. Uh, welcome to Stanford, or should I say a virtual Stanford. Uh, we science and engineering librarians look forward to helping you be successful wherever you happen to be this quarter. Some of you are on campus, I know, and, and many of you are probably uh, attending Stanford from home. So welcome to all of you. My name is Julie Sweetkind Singer, and I'm the Associate University Librarian for the Science and Engineering Resource Group and the head of the Branner Earth Sciences Library and Map Collections. While the presentation is going on, I ask that you please put your questions in the Q&A box down at the bottom of your Zoom screen. We will put URLs in the chat for easy reference. These slides and the recording will be available after the session. We will link them to a blog post that will be available on the Science and Engineering Library's webpage. So first, we're going to start off with the science and engineering librarians that are on the call uh, introducing themselves. So um, let me go ahead and I'll call on each one of you and you can unmute yourselves and uh, introduce yourself here. So first, I'd like to introduce Amanda Whitmeyer. Amanda? Good afternoon. My name is Amanda Whitmeyer. I'm the head librarian at Miller Marine Biology Library, which is located off campus about 90 miles away at the coast in Pacific Grove. Uh, Michael Newman. Hello, I'm Michael Newman. I am the biology librarian and in, well, until uh, the spring, my office was in the science library and in a SAP center. Uh, Grace Basinger. Hi, I'm Grace Basinger, the chemistry and chemical engineering librarian and my office is located uh, my regular office is located in the science library as well. Julie, I'm not seeing a Q&A option on the bottom. I'm only seeing chat. Ah, OK, I don't see one either. So please, everyone, thank you, Grace. Everyone, please put questions you have in the chat, and we'll make sure to monitor that. Uh, Linnea Shea. Hi, everyone. My name is Linnea Shea. I am one of the engineering librarians in the German Engineering Library in the Huang Engineering Center. Uh, I am specifically the engineering librarian for data and collections, so I'm in charge of our purchasing and our data programs. Uh, Allie Krogman. Hi, I'm Allie. I'm another one of the engineering librarians, and my focus is digital services and projects. Uh, Zach Painter. Hi, everybody. I'm Zach Painter. I'm also an engineering librarian. I'm the engineering librarian for research and teaching support. Uh, Ashley Jester. Hi everyone, my name is Ashley Jester. I am the Assistant Director for the Science and Engineering Libraries. So I am the head of the Lee and Moss Science Library and the head of the Terman Engineering Library. And I am also the Subject Specialist for Mathematics and Statistics. Uh, Andrea Olson. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Olson and I'm the Map Librarian at Branner Earth Sciences Library and Map Collections. Uh, my office is usually on the mezzanine, which you can see behind me. Um, which is upstairs at Brenner Library. Uh, Stace Maples. Hi there, everybody. I am Stace Maples, and I manage the Stanford Geospatial Center, which is part of the Brenner Earth Sciences Library. We help with access to spatial data infrastructure, data, and services. Uh, Salim, did I see you? Salim Mohammed, did I see you on the call? No, okay. And Amy Hodge. Okay, let me introduce those folks to you. So Salim Mohammed is the head of the David Rumsey Map Center, which is in Green Library. And Amy Hodge is our science data librarian, and she typically works out of the Branner Earth Sciences Library and Map Collections. So we're going to start now with a slide presentation to tell you Sorry, more about- Sorry, Julie? Yes. You forgot Stella. me. <laughs> oh my goodness, Stella. I jumped over you. You skipped right um, over. Um, hi, I'm Stella Ota. I'm the physics librarian covering physics, applied physics, and astronomy, and I'm coming to you from my kitchen table. Sorry, Stella. Glad you uh, jumped up and got in there. So we'll start our slide presentation now. Zach, if you'd start that up for me, I'd appreciate it. Um, Julie, can you hear me? Yes. I'm here. Hey, I, hi, Amy. I was here, but I wasn't able to unmute myself. Okay, Amy, so, do you want to give us an introduction? Just say just hello. Su just super quick to say hi, um, that I'm here. I'm Amy Hodge, and I'm the Science Data Librarian, and I generally help people with um, research data management and data sharing and things like that. So, um, and 
repository use and all that sort of fun stuff. And I'm coming to you from San Jose. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, let's talk now about the science and engineering libraries here at Stanford. So um, uh, next slide, please. So today what we're going to talk about are three different topics. One is introducing you to the libraries and librarians that you'll be dealing with um, throughout the time that you're here at Stanford. The second is to tell you how to get connected to these library services and our resources. We're going to give you an introduction to our library services and give you tools to make sure that you can do your work more efficiently. Next slide, please. So as we talk about the different services and what we offer, you'll notice that we offer workshops and consulting on a broad range of topics, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. We provide you with collections of books, journals, data sets, research software, and more. And many of these things are now available to you uh, electronically, and we've tried to do as much as we can online so that you can have access to as a wide a variety of services as we can possibly offer. We have subject specialists and technical experts here to help you, and we are able to do that remotely over email, through Zoom sessions, in whatever way we can to make sure that you get the kind of help and resources you need. And finally, we offer remote access to things like ebooks and online journals, databases, and requests for pickup and borrowing if you happen to be on campus, which we know actually that 6,300 students are going to be on campus this fall. So it's a rather large cohort of people that are actually actually here, some of whom may be you. So we wanted to make sure that you knew uh, that we were here for you to reach out to us. Many branch libraries are on campus. We have about 20 different branches on campus, but only a few of them are available to you if you are on campus and you want to visit them. The two with plenty of study space for you are Green Library and the East Asia Library. And you can see those on the right of this slide that are highlighted in green. So libraries that are highlighted in green are open for visitation by appointment. And there'll be information on one of the later slides that tells you uh, how you can go ahead to make an appointment to get into these libraries. Next slide, please. Although our science and engineering libraries are not open and the librarians are all working from home, you can page materials from these libraries to Green Library to check out. Uh, we do have staff that go into these libraries on a daily basis. They pull materials, send it to Green Library, and they also process new materials. So the libraries are running at slower than normal, but they actually are processing and making sure that you get the materials that you need. You'll notice the pictures here of the Earth Sciences Library and map collections in the Mitchell Building, the Science Library, which is on the third and fourth floor of the Robin Lee and Melissa Ma Library, and the Terman Engineering Library, which is sort of the middle slice on the right of the octagon that you see. Next slide, please. Uh, the David Rumsey Map Center is located in Green Library, and although Green Library is open for patrons, the Rumsey Center is not yet open. Uh, materials are paged from there to our special collections room. And then if you're so lucky to uh, spend some time when you're on campus, uh, when you're at Stanford, to be uh, at the Miller Library, at the um, Marine Biology Library down in Monterey, you would get to visit the uh, Miller Library there. Next slide. So uh, this uh, slide shows you pictures of the two libraries that are open on campus, if you happen to be on campus uh, with us. One is Green Library, which is the main research library. And it's for the humanities, social sciences. Um, there's copious study space there and where you're able to pick up paged items. The East Asia Library is in the Lathrop Building, and it's open for appointment for study space. Uh, the 24-hour study space that's noted here has not been opened as of now, but the East Asia Library is open. And you can notice on both of these that you can reserve your daily access by visiting mylibrary.stanford.edu, and those are for day passes. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to SAC, who's going to talk to us about how to get connected to access the library. Great. Um, as I said before, I'm Zach Painter, one of the engineering librarians. And I want to talk to you first about how to connect to some of the electronic resources that we have here at the Stanford Libraries. We do truly have a world collection, a world class collection of materials here. And, and I want to take some time to introduce you all to all of them and so you can see how you can connect to them. 
Um, there's three big things you really need to know about accessing our resources. Um, first method of accessing our electronic resources is that you can use SearchWorks. It's the library catalog. Uh, when you go to library.stanford.edu, there's gonna be a big search bar right in the middle of the screen. And that search bar will take you to a bento box and that bento box will show you all of the guides, um, things on the library website, the articles, the catalog books, multimedia, so much more. Uh, second and third, there's the Lean Library Browser Extension and the Easy Pro Proxy Bookmarkler. You will need to authenticate to your SUNET account uh, to fully take advantage of these. Uh, but once you do that, and if you have added and installed these things, uh, all of the materials that we have, they're electronic materials, um, you'll be able to access them and it'll appear without any barriers as if you were on the Stanford campus itself. Um, this works for the databases, it works for the journal collections, and even works for stuff like newspapers, uh, collections like the Washington Post and New York Times for me when I'm browsing, I'll get the little, uh, this is redirecting you through a proxy. And I use these all the time. Um, and so I, I wanna encourage you to do the same as well. Uh, I talked a little bit about SearchWorks already uh, for some recommended resources, uh, but there are other resources that I wanna point out to you as well. Uh, the Hadley Trust has the ETAS, the Emergency Temporary Access Service Digital Library. It's designed to allow you electronic access to materials that you otherwise would have to access in person. Um, but you can't do that because of COVID concerns or some other barrier. Uh, it works by basically creating a digital copy of an item and then it allows you to check it out as if you would check out a physical one. Uh, it's a really wonderful re resource. I know a lot of the people at Hadley Trust and they've done a lot of great work on this project. I'd really recommend that you check that out. And it's, it's a good way that we are able to expand our collections at Stanford. You can also configure Google Scholar to show all the materials that we subscribe to at the Stanford Libraries. If you're curious about an alternative to Google Scholar, uh, I'd like to recommend Dimensions Plus to you. Uh, it's pulled from curated sources and it has numerous features for doing these metric and comparative analyses of topics. Uh, there's a lot of other documents in there too. Um, and while neither of them are as, really as good to do a big search as some of our other databases, um, they are still tools that you should know about. And we're gonna talk some more about some of those big tools a little bit later on. Um, I also wanna point out, you know, access to other ebook platforms like Safari eBooks. It's very popular in some fields. Um, if you have questions about accessing any of our e-resources or any of our collections, um, you can contact your subject librarian directly. For example, we have, you know, if you're in physics, we have the unforgettable Stella Ota. Um, she will tell you everything you need to know and everything you didn't think to ask, but you need to know because she's seen it all. Um, you can follow up on the links that we provided um, here on these slides, or you can ask one of the other wonderful people, the Stanford staff, um, Engineering has the designer of these slides, graphic design and digital services champion, Allie Krogman, and she can also help you as well. Libraries are centers of information sharing, and I would be very remiss if I did not mention some of the other software and other computing things that you need. Uh, the remote and computing clusters, FarmShare, Sherlock, Nero, et cetera. Those are all available through Stanford Research Computing Center. If you need more compute power than what you already have, please do contact them. There's a number of partnerships that we have in the libraries with SRCC, uh, and I like promoting them. They have some really wonderful, fantastic people, some really great hardware, um, and a lot more powerful machines than probably the little MacBook or whatever that you have yourselves running um, there. There's also a new service that's provided uh, the virtual cluster computers. 
if you would like to use one of the computers as though you were sitting down at the Stanford Geospatial Center or in Green Library or in Terman Library or any of our other places, um, BPTL has allowed um, you to remote in and use these virtual computer clusters with all of that software that you would normally find installed. University IT also keeps a list of essential Stanford software, which is found at that link. So all the things like Zoom and Slack and Google Drive and all of the other really wonderful stuff that's kept there. Uh, and Stanford uh, University IT has also um, made MATLAB available to all Stanford affiliates. Uh, MATLAB is traditionally kind of expensive and now it's free for everybody who has, is actively at Stanford. And if you need that or other software for STEM, uh, maybe like SolidWorks, for example, you can find those software at the links that are on the bottom of this sheet. We are committed to getting you access to physical materials when we can. Um, and we're committed to other services that will help you um, whether we're in person or not in person. So there's the request and pickup. We have these paging services. The paging services will allow you to request material from any of our branches, and they'll be sent to Green Library for you to pick up. If you are blessed enough to work at Hopkins and be stationed at Hopkins, uh, where you can, you can meet our bone collecting, historical document digitizing, makerspace supervising things of all marine, uh, you'll be able to to work with Amanda Whitmire and the, the Miller Library is your pickup point and depository as well. I would also be remiss if I did not mention interlibrary borrowing to you as well. This is a free service and it will allow you to access many materials, digital only for now. Uh, hopefully soon we can add physical materials, but for now it's just digital. Uh, for other libraries, uh, if we don't have those materials and we have a major a partnership and consortium uh, called Borrow Direct with the other Ivy's Plus universities. Uh, if there's something we don't have, please do make you access of interlibrary loan and interlibrary borrowing. Very near and dear to my heart as an instructional person are the wide variety of workshops that we run for you. Uh, two of the great pillars of the Stanford University Libraries in the sciences, Grace Basinger and Michael Newman, um, among other many wonderful things that they do. They also have some really great partnerships with vendors and they work with a lot of specially scientific software. And those are tools that you can use for certain very specific disciplinary work. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about geospatial workshops later, uh, but we have other wonderful workshops on spatial technology. We have the Esri Map Story Winner of the Year, and workshops on that led by our storyteller and design extraordinaire, Andrea Olson. Um, there's also programs that are led by our former chair of the Carpentry Executive Council, Amy Hodge, um, and myself. Um, I guess I'm special too. Um, on teaching computational research skills and other aspects of data literacy and data science. The, our workshops for the Carpentries are something that I'm planning on right now. I know that we'll have offerings on R and Python, Git and GitHub, uh, cloud and cluster computing, workflow software, maybe a few other fun topics. And the information for those workshops and other workshops that I've talked about a little bit, uh, they're going to be listed for you soon at that library.stanford.edu slash workshops link. We also have a virtual re research consultation and reference service from people like Ashley Jester, who have got a PhD here and can tell you anything and everything you want to know about statistics. Uh, to Linnea Shea, also a Stanford alum, um, probably not exaggerating when I tell you she's the smartest person working at Stanford Libraries. Um, Joseph McCogo, who's a PhD candidate um, here at Stanford. He's worked in startups. He's worked with mechatronics. Uh, he has a really deep knowledge of uh, design and rapid design and rapid prototyping in the maker world. Uh, we have Kim Durante, uh, who teaches some of the most interesting workshops that I've ever been a part of. 
uh, with geospatial technology, Python programming. I'm sure she could teach someone art history if you really wanted. Um, and we have other wonderful staff too that, that staff our virtual research consultations. We have a calendar set up. We, have a, we hope to have a calendar system set up for you really soon. Uh, but for now, please reach out to that email address, consulting at list.stanford.edu, and we will work with you to help you out with your questions. And if Stanford Libraries had a most interesting man in the world character, I wish it were me, uh, but it's probably not. Uh, that person's probably Stace Maples. Um, and Stace, along with one of the best instructors at Stanford Libraries that I've seen, David Medeiros, uh, they run and head the Stanford Geospatial Center. Once you take an initial workshop to introduce you to some of their tools, you will have access to some really wonderful consulting and analysis services. There's the full Esri suite of software, some easy to use power tools like Cardo, and some of the highest quality civilian satellite images you can get from Google Earth Engine and from Planet. We were the first uh, academic library uh, to get Planet, uh, which is the point of pride here. Uh, and anything else you want to do with maps, geospatial data, telling stories, the people at the SGC and our adjacent uh, facilities, they want to see you. And for any of the wild or maybe not so wild ideas you have for a project, uh, speaking of wild, the image on the last slide, her, her name was actually Wild, um, and her last name is Wild, and she did a project where they tracked uh, migrant, the migrant patterns of uh, nomadic tribes using uh, how goats would eat everything around them. It's really super fascinating stuff. And there's also our partnership with the David Rumsey Map Center, and it's led by our exemplary rare map experts, Salim Muhammad and Andrea Renner. If you want historical maps or special images of any kind, when we're open, you do want to see some of the coolest technology at Stanford. And it's housed, David Rumsey Map Collections, uh, which are in Green Library. They also have a talk tomorrow, and you'll want to visit them for that talk too. I'm now going to turn it over to Ashley Jester, who's going to talk about your research toolkit. Hi, everyone. Nice to speak to you again, and uh, hopefully you're uh, learning a lot as you go along. I think um, Zach did a good job of introducing so many of our staff members, many of whom are able to be here today. So certainly get your questions ready for them, um, because I think they are the, we are the most valuable resource um, at Stanford Libraries, are, are the experts and the people here we have to help you. But right now I want to talk to you a bit about some of the tools that we license and make available uh, to help you with your Library journey. Next slide, please. So you're going to probably hear a lot over the course of your graduate career, a phrase called the research life cycle. And um, what the research life cycle is really about when you hear people talking about it is the way that I think you all know um, how kind of knowledge gets generated, which is you start with a question and you look for information and you gather a lot of resources and you weigh those resources against each other. Maybe if you're a lab scientist, you run some experiments. Maybe if you're a theoretical scientist, you do some modeling. But depending upon what you do, you get some results and then you share them out with the world and people give you feedback about your ideas and you get to promote your research and the cycle starts all over again. And so what I wanna to talk to you today is about working with information and really as you're getting started here as uh, graduate students at Stanford, um, Welcome, I want to say too, I was once a graduate student here at Stanford, so part of this is also telling you things that I wish I would have known then. Um, I will work that in a bit as I go. Um, but just, just to kind of get you started about how to think about the research life cycle for yourself um, and how to think about working with information um, while you're here at Stanford and through Stanford Libraries. Next slide, please. So this slide I think really illustrates um, a lot of what is true about academic research, which is that you're going to start with a really broad set of um, searching and tools and then you're going to refine it a little bit more and then eventually you're going to dig pretty deep um, and get into some really um, very subject specific and very sometimes tools that require a lot of expertise to use. Um, and this is true of information searching too. 
So if you look at the first block here of finding information, some of the tools that we have listed there, Google Scholar, um, as Zach mentioned, this is something that you can, there are instructions on the library website that um, will walk you through how to set up Google Scholar so that when you search Google Scholar, you see search results highlighted for Stanford. Um, an even better way to see what we have is to go directly to SearchWorks, which is our library catalog and has been mentioned several times over. Um, you see in parentheses there, Articles Plus, that is part of what you see returned when you will search. Um, there will be a stream of information um, that will just be about journal articles and dissertations and other short form scholarship, I think is a good way to think about it um, because there are also some book chapters in there as well. Um, and those are both um, broad tools that um, Google Scholar will search everything that Google Scholar crawls and SearchWorks will search our entire library catalog. Um, so those are great places to start. Another really um, useful search and discovery tool and one that is very close to my heart is something called XSearch, um, which you can also find linked through the library website and hopefully somebody can drop the link for you in the chat. Um, one thing I really like about XSearch is it's something called a federated search. Um, if you spend any time around librarians, you'll hear them talk about that. But what it means is that it searches over a bunch of things at once. Um, if you're thinking kind of in the real world analogy, it's like a kayak for, um, for library resources. And so it's searching over a bunch of our different um, data feeds that come from all, all of the different sources that we subscribe to. And the thing that I really like about XSearch is that the folks who have developed that tool have taken time to integrate a lot of the really powerful information um, that's contained in all of those different search products into its tool itself. So when you're searching, you really kind of search deep into those other databases. And this is where I will reveal that my background is in political science. That's actually, I have my PhD in political science from Stanford. And one of my favorite resources in social science for data is ICPSR. And XSearch leverages the full um, power of ICPSR and all of the detailed information in that catalog when it searches it. And it does it for all of the other tools that are in there as well. So it's a great way to kind of dig deep, but broadly. So once you've gotten past those general tools, you're gonna to wanna to look maybe in some places that are still going to be giving you kind of a broad swath of information, but maybe a little more focused. And this is where you see things like Web of Science and Scopus and a tool that Zach already mentioned called Dimensions Plus. And as Zach said, these are curated tools. So there are companies and frankly librarians um, working at those companies, standing behind these tools, pulling together the list of journals, the different publishers, um, all of the different streams of publication that get fed into these tools. Um, and they all have different range of coverage um, in terms of both the disciplines, the actual journals that are covered, um, the types of materials they return, whether they search preprints or do not search preprint archives. Um, and so you're gonna wanna explore each of those individually to kind of figure out which one maybe fits best with your needs um, or frankly, which interface you like the most because that counts for a lot too. And the great thing about all of these tools is that um, we have people here who can help you use them better. So um, once you uh, have figured out which tool you are interested in using, um, please you know, get in touch with your subject specialist and we are happy to do consultations um, and trainings, and you may even be through your departments getting a special orientation session directly from your librarian that will show you kind of how to use and leverage these tools. Um, but that's why we're here is to help you make use of all of these things. And then there's another tier beyond that, um, which is the really subject specific information. So, um, and honestly, I'm going to confess that some of these are databases with which I only know the name, um, like Biosis and Engineering Village. Um, actually, Engineering Village I know well, but Biosis I only know the name. Um, these are, um, uh, and the other resources listed here are, are really subject specific, right? Um, and these are ones, again, where I just want to emphasize that um, this is a great place for you to turn also to your librarian and reach out to them um, when you're doing searches, because I will say that these are tools that you have to learn how to use. And I actually just had a consultation yesterday morning with someone on a PubMed query because PubMed is one of the tools that is actually very complicated and there's a lot of um, power in the syntax, but if you aren't careful, you can end up 
doing weird things with your results um, and excluding the things that you didn't want to exclude. In any case, this is just a, another reminder that um, these are all tools that are available to you here at Stanford and you can find them if they're not SearchWorks themselves. You can look in SearchWorks and get direct links to um, access all of them through our subscriptions. But if you find that you're just not sure how to use them, don't let that be something that discourages you from making use, but instead just use that moment and reach out to us because that's why we're here. And I will tell you that librarians get really excited about showing people how to use search tools. It's one of our favorite things to do. Next slide. So once you've found all of the really interesting stuff that you're interested in looking at, um, whether it's a journal article or a book or a chapter or a dissertation or a preprint, you're going to make sure that you keep track of all of those citations. And we also offer um, a suite of citation management tools that can help you get started. So the first three you see listed there, EndNote, Mendeley, and RefWorks, are all actually subscription tools. So while you're here at Stanford, you can get nice access, um, premium access to these tools, but those are subscriptions that are paid for. Um, Zotero, the last tool listed here, is an open tool. Um, it also has a paid version, and I will say that none of these tools have an unlimited version available for free to a direct user. Um, but I would just say, you know, whatever tool you pick, um, definitely pick one, because um, it doesn't really matter so much which citation manager you pick as long as you find one that works for you and that you um, do a good job of keeping track of those materials you will find. And this is another place where I'll stop to say, um, learn from my mistakes. Don't find a really great article and think like, oh, it'll be so easy for me to find it again and not bother to just read it online and not bother to save the PDF or save the link or save any information about it and then never be able to find it again. Um, you don't want that to happen to you. So find a citation manager and adopt it and use it. Um, this is really related to finding sort of information, but you may find citations for things that we don't have full text access for. So, um, SearchWorks is the first place you should look if you find a, cit a citation for something out there in the world and you want to read the whole thing. Um, and e-journals will take you directly to our electronic journal subscription. Um, and there are other tools that will allow you to sort of see what we've already accessed, but this is a good place to plug something that Zach mentioned earlier, which is we do have a service called Interlibrary Borrowing. And if we don't have access to something, you can either ask us to buy it, which is a really simple process and easy to do. Um, and there are forms on the website um, where you can request either electronic or print resources. Um, but you can also, if we can't find a copy for us to buy, maybe it's out of print, um, maybe it's a rare item, um, we do have access to borrowing the collections of other libraries in the world. So um, definitely if you find a citation and we don't have it, don't let that be the end of your journey because um, I will say that one thing that librarians also love to do is to hunt down items until we can find them and get them into the hands of our users. So you've got all of your stuff, you've started to work and you're writing and you want to share your writing. Uh, maybe you write in LaTeX like me and you want to use a tool like Overleaf um, that allows you to share and collaborate in a tool in a, la in a coding um, markup language that's maybe not always so easy to collaborate in. I will say that I started using LaTeX back in the day before Overleaf existed, and um, it is much nicer to collaborate in a tool like Overleaf um, than it is to send marked up um, files back and forth with your own special coding scheme to denote when you think errors, edits and errors need to be made. Um, we also have a, access to a tool through Stanford Libraries and through um, the Dean of Research to a tool called protocols.io. Um, this is a tool really aimed at folks who uh, have research and lab protocols, um, but it can really be adapted for any kind of research protocol that you would like to share. So there are things from bioengineering, there are things from molecular biology, and there are also things from computer science shared there. Um, it's a tool for you to be able to share and publish your research protocols. Um, you will also get a digital object identifier, a DOI, when you share and publish there. So you can actually share your protocols and have it become something that other people can cite um, in their research. And of course, if you are looking for protocols, it's a great place to search and find all of the protocols that other people have shared. Um, and I'm looking at my, thinking of my colleague, Amy Hodge here, who um, is a molecular biologist and uh, has talked about some of the protocols in there that 
she had used heavily back in her um, world working in the lab. And of course, um, Stanford also has a university subscription to um, the Google um, Share Drive, I think now called Google Teams. So there's a lot of ways for you to be able to share um, all kinds of writing materials. You can use the drafting materials, the Google Docs to write collaboratively, to create collaborative spreadsheets and other collaborative research products. Um, and you can also share files very easily with people using those tools. Next slide. And of course, once you've done all of this wonderful stuff and found all of these wonderful resources and written your wonderful research, um, you want to share it. And actually, it's funny because this is the sort of last step in the research life cycle, but this should actually be the first thing you do today. Um, I would say if you have some spare time um, and you haven't already done it, um, you want to get an ORCID and you want to set up your Stanford profile. Um, so an ORCID is a, it's a unique identifier for an individual. Um, the idea here is that there are many researchers in the world and some of us share the same name. And wouldn't it be great if you could claim a unique identifier that would allow you to distinguish yourself from all the other Ashley Jesters in the world? Um, I have an ORCID. I think many of my colleagues also have ORCIDs. Um, the really great thing is if you already have an ORCID, that's awesome. Uh, you should link it to your Sanford SU Net ID. Um, we just in the last year joined ORCID as an institution here at Stanford. And so we have institution, an institutional ORCID, but we also have the ability for you to associate um, your SU Net ID, that token that gets you into all the things Stanford digital access uh, with your ORCID ID so that that record displays in your ORCID. And also you can use your SU Net ID and password directly log into ORCID using single sign-on. Um, and Profiles is Stanford's own local um, kind of version of a researcher, uh, well, profile and homepage. Um, this is another place where if you've linked your ORCID, it will actually, you can enable it to show up on your profile. Um, so there's an integration here, but Profiles is a place where you can enter information about your education, about your publications, um, about your employment history and present yourself to the world. Um, you have a lot of control over how the information is displayed there. Um, but again, it's a tool that's available to you here as a researcher at Stanford. And the reason I say to do this today is because um, it's, you know, you want, you're starting your graduate school journey right now and um, creating these things at the beginning will enable you to use them the whole way through your career. Um, and I honestly wish a lot of the things that we have shown you today are things that I learned when I was in graduate school in my third year or my fourth year or even my fifth year. And I really wish that I would have learned them on my first day um, or certainly in my first year. Uh, so I hope that some of this information was useful to all of you in that way. And next slide. And this is a list of, this will be available as we said, we will make these slides available to all of you, but this is just a list of useful URLs that we thought we would gather onto a single slide for all of you. And you will note that most of these are about the libraries. So of course, the library homepage. And then mylibrary.stanford.edu, which is your portal for managing your own library account. That's where you'll be able to get those day passes that Julie talked about to reserve um, uh, space in green or at the East Asia Library. And it's also where you'll be able to manage the books that you might check out or any requests you might have for interlibrary borrowing. SourceWorks is our library catalog where you'll be able to find and get access to all of our resources. Um, and of course, we've got links there that will direct you on to how to get some of those specialized services. And I want to, again, just draw attention as we get ready to take some questions from everyone um, to the people who work here and to those experts and specialists. Um, there are, as I heard a colleague say this morning, there's just so much expertise here in the libraries and there's just so much knowledge that we have that we would like to share with you. And so um, please get in touch with us. If you visit the people pages, you can find people who are specialists in the subjects you're studying. Um, and of course, we know how much the work is so interdisciplinary now that you can also find people who are maybe doing something that you're interested in and can help you get started on that journey. And the library does have a website um, dedicated just for graduate students at library.stanford.edu slash grads. And with that, I'm going to say, are there questions that we can take from everyone? I, 
I've been talking, so I'm gonna mute myself and see if anyone who has been monitoring the chat can field those questions. Ashley, we have received a couple of questions. Most of them uh, have been answered as we've been going through and chatting. Um, there are, uh, there was a question around some uh, software things like SolidWorks and everything. So um, perhaps, uh, Zach, maybe you could spend a minute talking about some of the Cytopic guides or a special pages that we've created in the library to help people get to the resources that we have. Yeah, so uh, this past year, um, Stanford libraries have sort of reinvented the research guides that we have. So we have these curated guides for topics and courses and we've started to reinvent those and move them into a brand new platform. Um, that platform is available at guides.library.stanford.edu um, and you can find, you can you can find resources there for most subjects when they become available. We're still working on transitioning some of the guides from the old platform to the new one. Uh, but we hope that pretty soon we'll have information for all of those things. And we also have the links that, um, so Grace has put out in the chat. And then I know that in the chat, there was um, a link to using ter the term and equipment as well. We will have a guide that was that is created for accessing software. We have an old guide for that, and we're going to move that over. Um, but for those particular uh, software like MATLAB or SolidWorks or other specific software, um, right now the best place to go is probably the individual library pages. Uh, we did have a question about how we access databases such as NCBI through the Stanford Library. The best place to go to look for those is SearchWorks, the library catalog, searchworks.stanford.edu. All of the databases we have access to are cataloged in the library catalog. And so it's a good place to start whenever you'd like to um, uh, find something in your search. If you go to the main library webpage, library.stanford.edu, and put in your search term, it will not only search for uh, in our library catalog but it will search for things like topic guides and a database list so it'll give you a much broader search if you want some a very specific search for materials then you would go to searchworks.stanford.edu other questions I don't see other questions coming in. I'm going to ask our uh, subject librarians who are on the call if they had anything that they wanted to add in addition to what Ashley and Zach were able to share with you today. I hesitate to mention this because <laughs> access to our physical spaces is limited. But we do offer things like 3D printing, um, especially in the engineering library, there's actually a mobile maker cart. It's usually associated with coursework, but who knows what's gonna happen fall quarter. Um, we have kits, Arduino kits and microcontrollers you can check out. So, so when you think about reaching out to your librarians for support, think outside the book. We have lots of other things to offer. So depending on what you need, um, even if you think we might not have it, get in touch, because we might just. Yeah, and I'll also talk a little bit about the uh, like the mobile maker cart. This was a project that we created in the engineering library. Um, myself, Joseph Makogo, as mentioned before, and then Michael Mack. Uh, the three of us um, partnered together to form a a sort of a movable a movable three D printer and electronics makerspace kind of kit thing that relatively simple materials to check out. If you have never used a 3D printer before, if you've never used microcontrollers before, um, we, we can help you and train you and, and get you started so that when you have the chance to visit a full-fledged makerspace, um, like the Product Realization Lab, which is two floors down from the Long Center, or perhaps Amanda's space out at Hopkins, uh, you might feel more comfortable stepping into that. Uh, the mobile maker cart, uh, we built two new versions of, and those are actually in our catalog. 
And if you're interested in checking those out and met, um, working with those, um, you can contact uh, Joseph or myself or Mike Knack. Um, and the three of us, you know, we're working on a calendar system and a checkout uh, way for, to get these materials to people. Um, yeah, I do want to do want to mention that. Great. I've just put in the chat a question for all of you that are on the call with us. Are you in the Bay Area? Are you uh, coming to us remotely from around the world? Are you on campus? So if you would like to share with us where you are and we can we can see where we're stretched across uh, during this year and happy to uh, help you. We are recording this session. We'll be doing more recordings and workshops that we do online. We're going to be making those available to you. So as many of the things that we can do, we will do so that you can access these no matter where you're from. And uh, we're happy to see you all uh, remotely or here. So it looks like we've got a, a quite a, a variety and a fair number of you who are on campus. So that's, that's exciting. Uh, let's see. We also had a question about workshops that you would like us to, um, to have. So if you have any of those, please make sure to put those in the chat as well. It's amazing to see how many of you are on campus. That's great. And for everybody on campus, don't forget, we have the request and pickup service too. So there are the spaces you can, um, of course, go study in Green Library or East Asia Library, but also you can request materials um, from our branches and pick it up at Green Library. Wow, we have someone from the Indian Ocean, from Re Reunion Island, that's great. Well, again, I wanna thank you all for joining us today. We really appreciate you taking the time. I wanna give you a hearty welcome to Stanford. It's not the experience perhaps you had hoped for, but it's, it's, we're all going to make the best of it, all of you and all of us, to give you uh, the best experience we possibly can as you begin your graduate career here. So welcome, and we look forward to being in touch with you. It really is a joy for us to help you do your research and be successful here. You're never bothering us. We like working with you. So please do not hesitate to get in touch because it really makes our day when we can help you do your work uh, more efficiently and get the resources you need to do so. We have recorded this session. We will be creating a blog post that has the slides and the audio as well. And we'll link that out and make sure uh, that that's on the science and engineering web pages so you can all find it again and link it into the uh, new graduate student orientation uh, page as well. So thanks for attending and good luck uh, starting off at Stanford this year. Bye.